Hey, it's Jared with State of Tech. Today we're gonna to take a look at some iPhone tips and tricks that are gonna improve your usability. Hopefully you'll learn a few things, whether you've been on an iPhone for a long time or you're brand new to an iPhone. So let's jump right in. So up until recently, Safari's been the default browser and there's no way around that. If you use another browser on your computer like Chrome or Firefox, now you can actually set that as the default on your phone as well. To do that, swipe down on your home screen and from the search, type in settings and tap on settings. Then you'll swipe down a little bit more to get to the search box and type in Safari. So you type in Safari and click on the app icon for Safari. This is the settings and you'll see here default browser app. Tap on that and you'll see a list of all the default browsers that you have available and you can change it here. So you can see I have Chrome, Edge, DuckDuckGo, and Firefox. I can tap on that and then whenever I click on any link in an email, do a search or anything like that, it's gonna open it up by default in Google Chrome or the browser of your choice. Do you use a different email app on your phone than the default mail app? Now you can change the default mail app and automatically have email links and all that good stuff open up in the app of your choice. Swipe down on your home screen and type in settings. Swipe down a little bit further to search and then type in mail. Now you'll want to tap on the mail app to get to its settings and you'll see default mail app. Tap there and you'll see a list of all the email clients that you have installed on your phone. I use Spark and it's an awesome email app. If you wanna check it out, I've got a link down in the description below for you, but I have it set as my default mail app. And now when I click on a link and another email or on a website that is gonna open up the email app, it goes to Spark instead of the default mail app. Now, if you had a chance to mess with widgets on your iPhone yet, I wanted to show you how to add them, specifically the different sizes of the widgets. It's very easy to do. Tap and hold on your home screen. Hit the plus button up at the top left-hand corner. You'll see some widget examples here, but you can actually scroll down and get to a list of widgets that are available from the apps that you have installed. Not all apps have widgets yet. A lot of them are coming out with widgets though. So if you wanna add a widget, just simply tap on the app. So I'll choose Google and then I can swipe and there are two different widget sizes, a small one or a wide one that goes all the way across. And then sometimes there's even multiple options. To add that widget, you just simply hit add widget and it's gonna add it. You can tap and hold and drag it up and down on your screen or even over to a new home screen. And if you wanna remove it, very easy to do that. Tap and hold on it and then hit remove widget and it will remove it from your screen. So emojis and text messages are a lot of fun. I love using them over regular emojis and it's easy to share one right into a text message. But did you know that you can reply to a specific message within your text messages with an emoji? It's very easy, let me show you how to do it. So you can easily do it by tapping on your emoji and then you see your frequently used emojis over there. But if you don't see that, you can tap on your emoji app and when you find one, you can swipe to it so let's just swipe and find one that fits and you can tap and drop it right on top of a specific message and then that emoji replies specifically to that line of text pretty cool did you know that you can disable home screens temporarily? I think this is a neat feature. Tap and hold on your home screen and then tap on the dots down at the bottom. You'll see that there are check marks underneath all of your home screens. Now, if you wanna have different home screens for different times of the day, maybe you want one for home life, maybe you want one for at work, you could simply uncheck one of them and disable it temporarily. So it doesn't matter which home screen it is, you just have to have one of them active. So you can have multiple home screens disable them temporarily or re-enable them without having to delete them. I think this is a neat feature. When you're done, just hit done at the top right and you'll see that that is disabled now and there is nothing there. To bring it back, all I have to do is follow the same sequence, tap on the check mark, hit done, hit done, and voila, it's back. Now, if you use your iPhone to store passwords, which I think is a great idea because then you can have more challenging passwords that are harder to crack, you can easily get your passwords by asking Siri. So rather than going through all of the settings to try and find a specific password, you can simply ask Siri. Hey Siri, what's my Facebook password? 
And then it gives me a whole list of passwords and I can easily tap on it and get access to that password, which I think is awesome. Creating custom ringtones or text message tones for the iPhone is fun and easy. You're gonna need an audio file and your computer. You'll wanna trim down that audio file to 40 seconds for ringtones or 30 seconds for text tones, and you can use a website called A Cutter Pro for that. Then, once it is trimmed down, you'll want to import that into iTunes. And once it's imported into iTunes, you'll go to File, Convert, Create AAC Version. That's gonna convert it to the appropriate version. In a finder window, changing that tracks file extension from M4A to M4R. Go back to iTunes Music App, right click on the same track again, select Delete from Library, and then Keep File so it's not sent to the garbage. The last step is to copy the tone over to your phone. Connect your phone to your computer with the Music App opened. Click on your phone over in the sidebar, and then click General tab. Drag the MR4 track inside the general tab, and that's it. Now in your phone, you can go to settings, and then sound and haptics, and then under ringtones, you'll see your new ringtones. Oh, yeah. Now, if you find that your iPhone's battery is not charging as fast as you want, there is a new feature that has been enabled by default on most iPhones, and that is to optimize battery charging. It's good to have on because it's going to make sure that the battery gets the most lifespan by not charging it too quickly, but if you need your phone to charge quickly, you can change this easily by swiping down, type settings, tap on settings, scroll down to battery, tap on battery health, and then you'll see optimized battery charging where you can turn this off. You could turn it off till tomorrow or you can turn it off altogether. And this will allow your phone to charge much faster. I recommend just the turn off until tomorrow option so that way the, it defaults back to the optimization settings. Did you know that you can use your iPhone's keyboard like a trackpad to move the cursor around? How many times have you made a spelling mistake and you've wanted to put the cursor somewhere? Tapping around just doesn't work that well. On the space bar, tap and hold and then drag around without letting off. You can see I can move the cursor around anywhere I would like. Simply let off and then I can make my change or adjustment. Awesome. Are you tired of apps asking you for feedback all the time? Well, you could turn that off. Let's swipe down, type in settings to go to our settings app. We're going to scroll down to App Store. And then under App Store, where it says in-app ratings and reviews, we'll toggle that off. And now apps won't ask us for that review anymore. Although reviews are important, so if you like an app, make sure to go into the App Store and review it. Now, if you like having a larger phone but find it difficult to reach all the way across the keyboard one-handed, there is a one-handed keyboard mode, and I'm going to show you how to use it. Down where there is either the emoji or the globe icon, you'll tap and hold on that, and then you see there is a full keyboard, a right keyboard, or a left keyboard. So I'm going to choose the right keyboard because I'm holding the phone in my right hand, and you'll see that it's moved the keyboard over to the right. I can then utilize the keyboard, even swipe typing, all all that stuff works the same, and then when I'm done, I just tap the arrow and it returns to full width. iOS 14 supports picture-in-picture, -picture, but it's still a little tricky. If you're watching a YouTube video and you want to do picture-in-picture, -picture, you can't yet do it from the YouTube app, but you can go into Safari, and if you are viewing a video just like this in Safari and you want to go to picture-in-picture, -picture, there's a new icon up here that you'll tap. And when you tap that icon, now you can go and move that picture anywhere around the screen that you want, and you utilize uh, basically any other app while having picture in picture and it's pretty awesome. When you're ready to go back to full screen, you just simply tap on the icon and it brings it right back. So hopefully this will be rolling out to more apps and you'll start to see that icon appear more often, allowing for picture in picture. How many times have you put your phone in Do Not Disturb and forgotten to take it out? Well, there's a way to set Do Not Disturb until you leave. Maybe you're in a meeting and as soon as you leave, you want your phone to come out of Do Not Disturb. Swipe down from the top right-hand corner of your screen and you'll see the Do Not Disturb option. Rather than just quickly tapping on it, tap and hold on it to see the different options that are available. We have for one hour, until this evening, or until I leave this location. So if I enable this option, it will stay on until I physically leave this location. It uses your proximity, and it's a really neat feature so that you don't forget to turn off your Do Not Disturb. 
If you feel like some of your apps might be draining your battery, there's an easy way to correct this. Swipe down and type in settings. Tap on settings and then go down to battery. What the phone is going to do is show you the apps that are utilizing a lot of battery. And so we can see here YouTube, Spotify, Instagram, they've been using a lot of battery life. So if I want to disable background refresh, because a lot of times what is happening here is in the background, the apps are running and they're doing things and they're utilizing a lot of your battery life. I can go into general now and then tap on background app refresh and I could turn off all of the apps that I don't want to be running in the background. But what this means is that when you close the app, it is going to completely close the app. And so if you had something you were in the middle of, it's going to maybe reset that app. So you want to make sure that if you're using an app, like a creative app or a Word app, document app or something like that, that you make sure to save what you're working on if you're gonna have this feature turned off. Did you know you can use your iPhone as a document scanner without installing any apps? You can use the Notes app. So let's swipe down and type in Notes. What I've done is created a folder called Scans. I'll tap on that folder, I'll tap on the new note button, and then tap on the camera. It's gonna ask me what I want to take a picture of. I'll choose Scan Documents. I can put a document on the table and take that picture. It allows me to drag in the corners just to adjust it, but it did a pretty good job. I'll hit Keep Scan and then I'll move on to another one, ready for the next scan. Keep scan, and save. And now I have two documents saved in this note, and I can keep all of this right within the Notes app, which using iCloud will sync to my Mac, my iPad, and any other connected device. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope that there were a couple of things that you learned how to do. Share this video with someone that you know that has an iPhone that you think would find these tips and tricks useful. Subscribe to the channel here if you want more videos like this. And if you have a tip of your own that you want to share with us, let us know what it is down in the comment section below. But that's going to do it for today. Thanks so much for being here, and we'll see you back in the next one.